May 29th, 1986. It was party time in Europe. Eurovision winner and Belgian superstar Sandra Kim performed at the first raising of the European flag in front of the European Commission in Brussels. J'aime la vie seemed the perfect anthem for Europe in the 80s as it moved towards a closer union. The 80s had seen the growth of the EU into double figures with the entry of Club Med countries, Greece, Portugal and Spain. But the story of the Mediterranean enlargement is the story of EU's coming of age. Rewind to the 1970s, and Greece, Portugal and Spain were still ruled by dictators. One by one, they turned against authoritarian regimes and towards Europe. But in Portugal, there was another chronological coincidence, the end of empire. Portugal will be the very last European power to um, grant independence to its colonies. The independence of Angola and Mozambique um, means the end of dictatorship and opens the door to Europe. The Mediterranean enlargement was different than previous ones, though Greece proved the exception as it passed the hurdles without much trouble and joined on January 1st, 1981. La Grèce nous apporte en effet son histoire et sa culture qui sont les racines mêmes de l'Europe. Though allusions were made to Europe's democratic roots in Greek history, it was the talks with Spain and Portugal that would change the nature of European enlargement and the community itself forever. It is only um, after the signing of the treaty, and especially in the course of the 1960s, that these debates have started. Um, can we admit Franco-Spain um, into this club? And um, if not, why? And if we cannot admit it, then it means that this has something to do with democracy, human rights. The negotiations took uh, nine years. Uh, so it's, it's a process uh, uh, of uh, adapting uh, our laws and institutions to the acquis, of uh, adopting new standards. We either, and have had to make a revision of the constitution to make sure that it was indeed in line with democratic standards. But it wasn't just a question of human rights. Spain's fishing armada was also a cause for concern. It was larger than the EC's entire fleet. French fishermen attacked foreign trucks in protest and French truckers blockaded the Spanish border well into 1984. I remember Prime Minister Andreotti saying at the final, final discussions when they were talking about fisheries. Andreotti saying, uh, I cannot understand why uh, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, had uh, the, the, the people, the apostles, uh, he chose them amongst fishers, fishermen, because they were so complicated. <laughs> Spain's entry would also increase the EC's agricultural area by 30% and the workforce by 25%, which would have a huge impact on the common agricultural policy. The common agricultural policy at that time in, in the 1970s and early 1980s is still about 80% of the community's budget. So it is not a minor affair, of course, admitting um, Spain because so much of the budget um, goes to um, agricultural um, subsidies. January 1st, 1986 meant Europe enlarged across the Mediterranean coastline, but it wasn't just an extension of possible beach holiday destinations, it enriched Europe as a whole. We all appreciate the, the seriousness, for example, of the Germans, but also la joie de vivre of the Mediterranean. So I think it's a very good mix. And um, with maybe the capacity for hard work, but also with the talent uh, of both, we can compose uh, a very good European. The Mediterranean enlargement would become a historical example for EU integration. The fears over agriculture, fishing and migration would be proven unfounded over time. But that didn't prevent the same myths reappearing in future enlargements following the fall of the Berlin Wall.